Welcome to the Patricia Fripp Sales Series webinars. As you know, this is where we bring you the best information on your sales conversations, presentations, and strategies. My expertise, of course, is helping you better craft your message and sales stories. And in this series, I interview some of my smart friends and associates who have skills that I am curious learning more about and I know you are. Today, you will be talking to and listening to my director of social media, Melanie DePoli. Now, listen to what we say about Mel. She helps organizes or he helps organizations and companies and people just like me build brands worthy of going viral by helping them understand how to communicate with people and technology. Sit back and hear from our other sidekick, Paul, who will tell you how you can engage with us, ask your specific questions, and answer our polls. Take it away, Paul. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, on the right-hand side of your screen, as you can see, there is a chat box. In this chat box, you'll be able to ask your short, specific questions throughout the call. Make sure to ask your questions sooner rather than later so we have plenty of time to get to them. If we don't have time to answer your question during the call, they will be answered offline. In addition to the chat window in, in that same area, there will be a polling question that comes up every once in a while. For most of them, you'll have approximately 60 seconds to answer. Just click your answer, select vote, and then we'll discuss the results during the call. The first question is, do you invest more than 30 minutes per week on LinkedIn? Just go ahead and click yes or no and then vote, and we'll come back a little bit later with the, with the results. All right, perfect. And just, Paul, give them a heads up because after the first poll, you will bring up the second one while I'm talking to Melanie. And that will be? That will be, do you believe you're getting results from LinkedIn? Because we all know that LinkedIn helps us build our brands and our communities and reputations. However, I know I am not alone. There have been times in my career before I met Melanie, you think, is this really all all the work? You know, let's, uh, Melanie, it is so exciting to have you this in the interview system. Usually you're listening in typing uh, all the tweets from what the experts say. And I'm not sure whether it's you, our subject, or our marketing, but we have one of the biggest crowds we've ever attracted. And LinkedIn is so popular. We had a great session with Kurt Shaver, who is also an ex uh, an expert in LinkedIn and it was so popular we're looking for more information so Melanie your your career in marketing started at age 16 in high school tell us about that that it did uh, when I was 16 in high school I'm from the Northeast and we had a really bad winter so we had a lot of snow days to make up so a lot of the teachers were piling homework on us and piling papers on us to try to meet all the requirements. In English with Mrs. Sangerlin, we ended up having three major papers due back to back. By the time we got to the third one, I said, no, I'm not doing it. I'm done. I will put together a digital presentation for you. I will put together a poster for you. I will do a presentation. I am not writing another paper. And she stood there and looked at me like, <sighs> and she she was one of us at the time who literally could not turn the computer on by pushing the on button without screwing it up. So when I offered to do a digital presentation for her, her eyes lit up like a kid in the candy store. She's since gone on to win awards uh, for being the a teacher who has led the digital era in incorporating digital technologies in uh, the education realm and she gives me complete credit but I I think she, it's her drive that has done it but anyway uh, so yeah that's how I got started 
and did two con competitions in high school where they were, first one was national, second one was international, where I competed on creating digital pro uh, projects that convey the educational curriculum. And then in college, I was the uh, unofficial PR person for the college. So I would go out into the community and represent the college as their PR person. I was told I didn't have to go to class as long as I met, kept my grades up. But I guess I'm a sucker for uh, learning, and I wanted to go to class and do that. So I did both. All right. So I always find that how people get started on their journey is so interesting. And rather than regale everyone with all your fancy corporate clients and the projects, let's look at what we promised our listeners. We promised them, Melanie, that you will do a deep dive with specific strategies to maximize their LinkedIn by maximizing the status updates to build your brand, publish on Pulse, uh, to get more visibility, leverage LinkedIn groups to ensure people respond to you and understand the do's and don'ts of organizing your top contacts. Now, Paul, looking at the results, 42% of our audience uh, invest more than 30 minutes per week. 57% don't. And then, Paul, if you can bring up the second poll to see if they believe that they're getting results. Now, Melanie, you start talking about, you tell us there's a difference between timeless and timely social media strategies. Can you explain what that is? Sure. When you're putting together your overall social media strategy, I find that many companies feel overwhelmed by yet another thing to do, another item on their to-do list. They see all this work with social media. So fo focus your thinking on either timeless or timely. Timeless means you're creating evergreen content. You create it today and it's still relevant in five years from now. Timely, meaning you're following the news, you're on top of the news, and everything you push out is related to what is going on this current moment, this current second. Both strategies are great, but pick one to drive your overall thought process. It'll help keep you focused. If you choose a timely strategy, the majority of your time is going to be spent following the news, following what's new, and adding your comments accordingly. If you pick a timely strategy, it's how do you take what is your core content and make it relevant today, tomorrow, and also how do you update it to refresh it so it doesn't get old and stale. Generally speaking, what we do with you, Patricia, is a timeless strategy and then we filter in certain elements that are timely. Now with LinkedIn, LinkedIn is a blend of both where you can be timeless and timely and when you have that mentality it helps you again focus on your strategy of what you're doing and why you're doing it. Melanie, for, for most professionals, whether they work with a company or association, and assuming that they are an ambitious professional that wants to use LinkedIn to really position their career short term and long term, taking that into, con into context, the timeless and the timely, let's step back a step. Because you analyze, and on our last call, you analyzed several of our member, Frit VT members' LinkedIn profiles. If we challenge everyone to race back to their profile, because 67% of this audience who's live, we know many people are watching the replays, don't believe they're getting any results. So for the 67% who don't, and even those who are tuned in because they want to get better, what do we need to do with our LinkedIn profile? That is a great question. 
the first tip to keep in mind, and this is the overarching tip that needs to echo in your head every time you're on LinkedIn, is understand that your actions are a blend of communicating for technology and with people. Mm -hmm. So what does this mean? For technology, in simple terms, LinkedIn is a search engine, just like Google, Bing, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, and every other search engine on the market. In its most simplest form, it interprets zeros and ones. No normal person is intended to understand the algorithm, so don't try. Just know that there are certain words, certain phrases, and certain behaviors that the tech side needs to have so you can get maximum results. Now, while all of that is great, it's the people that are actually reading your posts, reading your profile, and engaging with you. So how do you take what the search engines need to give you the appropriate ranking and phrase it in a way that people want to read what you're writing? Mm. That's the blend of your engagement on LinkedIn. And that's what we're going to go in and we're going to show you some examples of what the difference is and how to think about that as you're participating on LinkedIn. All right. And our result is 71% are taking the time less approach, 29% is time lee. Now, whatever our focus is, they are a brand of both. Yes, yes. You oh. can't have a purely timeless strategy because then you're going to very quickly look dated. Hmm. And also on the flip side, you can't have a completely timely strategy because then it doesn't look like you can commit to anything and you're that ADD person that they don't know what they're going to get when they work with you. All right, good. So it's uh, always a blend of both. All right, well, do you want to bring up an example now, Melanie? And when you were analyzing them last week, and even when we've worked together, which was a surprise to me, we have to write our LinkedIn profile from us. Rather, it's not a bio that anyone else might have put. We have to, you know, we have to bring it up. We have to write so I rather than Patricia. So. Paul, do we have somebody live that would like their profile analyzed? Well, ah. And I will get back to you. Okay, okay, good. So while we're waiting for that, real quick, when you go through your profile, yes. every aspect of LinkedIn is searchable by the search engines. When you go to a search engine and you type in someone's name, they all search LinkedIn first. Every single one of them. Your name is your name. Your headline, which is the text that is directly below your name, is a tweetable phrase that sets you apart from everyone else in the market. If you are a sales manager, how many other sales managers are on LinkedIn? What makes you a different sales manager from everyone else on LinkedIn? It's that tweetable phrase that is also highly searchable by the search engines. So keywords are important, but they also have to be readable and uh, un understood by the people who are looking at them. Realistically, people read your name first, your headline second, and then your summary third. So now those does are your headline include your your title or your role. For example, if you were a payroll manager for Clearox, and, and because I know we have we have quite a few people listening from the American Payroll Association. Mm -hmm. So especially if we, we join associations, and of course our National Speakers Association is coming up this week, uh, we join associations to learn how to improve, but also if we find ourselves perhaps laid off, LinkedIn is also a great place to position yourself that I'm now available, people would snaffle you up. 
So what would your tagline be? Would it be the best payroll manager in the world? <laughs> yes and no. Uh, you want to, generally speaking, in the headline area, refrain from using your job title. Because ah. if you're at a if you're a sales manager at in this case Clorox, yeah, that's great, but it doesn't tell the person viewing your profile what makes you a better sales manager than someone else. Mm. From a hiring perspective, be cautious of using the I'm available or looking for work in your headline. Yes. Tradition knows that it's easier to find a job when you have a job. So position yourself based on your expertise, not based on your job title. This way, when somebody is looking at your profile, you're telling them a quick snapshot in one sentence or less what makes you different from all of your competition on LinkedIn. All right, good. And Paul, I do believe that we have a couple of volunteers, is that right? Yes, we do. We have quite a few volunteers, actually. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I went with uh, the first person to respond was Dan Diamond. He's a doctor in Seattle. And he sent in his the URL for his LinkedIn profile. And I sent that to you, Melanie. Did you get that? Yes. I'm also already connected to Dan. So Perfect. As soon as that loads on my end, there now, we go. When you do presentations for, for companies, associations, do you do live demos like this as part of your presentation? It depends on the organization. I prefer to do the live demos. However, depending on time and technology requirements depends on if that is available or not. So I've done it both ways. Okay. In my opinion, it works much better when I'm able to do the live demo. Well, as you know, ah, oh, yes, there. Performance under pressure, that's a good line, isn't it? It is a great line. However, I would also encourage Dan to include speaking or a, a keyword that is related to specifically how he works mm. with his clients. Because performance under pressure, while it is a great tagline, from a keyword perspective, it doesn't tell the viewer how he can help them. All right. So I would add that in. It's a fabulous photo. With your photo, remember that your photo is realistically going to be viewed by your thumbprint. Mm -hmm. So a quarter of an inch by a quarter of an inch. So zoom in tight on your face. Dan does a great job of that. And the photo in the back shows how large of an audience he's presented with. Yeah, great that's job. Impressive. Now you'll notice as you scroll down, he's also customized his LinkedIn profile. Kudos to Dan. In relationship, we can add notes that we can see, but he can't see. So if you want to make a note about how you met someone at this conference, they had on this color scarf, and they made mention to in need of this service, but the manager is not right on board. So you can make a note here to remind yourself how you met them and why and how you're going to follow up with them later. You okay. can also add a reminder. So again, we met Dan at this conference. He mentioned that in about six months he's thinking about hiring you, but not you specifically, but the services you offer. So that means you want to follow up with him in about four to five months. Mm tag allows you to group your connections based on however your CRM system is set up. So we can say that Dan is a part of the National Speakers Association and if he was a vendor for you we could mark him as a vendor. This information here is for you and Dan will never know how we are grouping him. Mm. Now having said this we can make all of these notes, but just because you're connected to somebody on LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter does not mean that you have the right to export their data and add them to your mailing list. Mm. So just keep that in mind. Now as we scroll down, you'll see 
articles that he's published. Great job. Very clear and captivating images. It looks like the one of the kid is a little blurry, but it's still a good picture. Yes. Now with the summary, this here is a no-no. LinkedIn in particular will tell you, and this is true across all social media platforms, I, me, my, and myself are perfectly acceptable. When you write in third person, it actually conveys the message that you do not monitor your own profile, somebody else is managing it, and you actually don't aren't as focused on building relationships. So update this to be in the first person, not in the third person. He does a great job with putting in his videos here, showing a sample of his work. I would update this video. Uh, great that you label it video, but why are you showing us Typhoon Yolanda? Let's help them understand. Here we know that we're going to learn more about Dan. Here we know we're going to see his TEDx presentation. Why are we learning about this? Okay. Now, as you'll notice as we go down, we're scanning. We're not reading. Mm. The same thing is true for anybody viewing your profile. But just because they're scanning, not reading, doesn't mean you can't take advantage of the search engine aspect. So with Dan's company here, you see that he's, you know, this company is uh, Noggin Storm, meaning he's shown He's connected his personal profile to a company profile. And you know this because there's a logo to the right. You do do this because company pages are highly searchable by the search engine. Okay, I want you to say that again because the technology went a little tweak. So th with, with Facebook, you have a personal page and a business page. With mm -hmm. LinkedIn, you have... Would you consider this is your business page? No. Face, uh, Facebook and LinkedIn are very similarly set up. You have on Facebook your personal profile and you have a business page. The same thing happens on LinkedIn. You have a personal profile and we are looking at Dan's personal profile and in his work experience we're making reference to how he has connected his personal profile to a company page. Okay. And that is good. You do want to do that. He also has a lot of testimonials or recommendations as LinkedIn calls them. 42 just for this particular position and Dan's amazing so of course he's going to have 42 recommendations. Now he is, I'm frequently being asked, oh, will you recommend me on LinkedIn? If people respond that you hardly know, do you ignore that? Should we take the initiative to, for example, now I'm sure those of us who really can see this and know Dan are now inspired to go in and put an endorsement. What's your feeling? There is a difference between endorsements and recommendations. Mm. Endorsements are like what we're looking at here. Okay. They are keyword specific and all you're doing is clicking a like. Yes. Saying thumbs up, plus one. I, I agree that Patricia is a, ha, knows a lot in executive coaching, public speaking, and so on. Mm. That's all you're saying. A recommendation, on the other hand, is the equivalent of you being willing to refer that person to, to your best friend. Okay. If you're willing to make that commitment, then you want the recommendation. So going back to what we talked about earlier with the technology versus the people, endorsements are about technology, recommendations are about people. Now, having said that, so I'll show you how to edit the skills real quick. All I did, we're on Patricia's profile right now. We clicked on add a skill. Yes, you do want to be endorsed because you are busy. 
You do not have time to go to all of your 500 plus connections, go through all their skills, and click endorse, 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 endorse. Mm. So this is where all of your endorsements reside. You'll notice there's an X, meaning we can delete any one of these at wow. any time. You have complete control over what you are endorsed for and who you are endorsed by. So you'll notice over here that we have Manage Endorsements. If you click on Manage Endorsements, you'll see a list of these same keywords. We can go in and we can remove any one of these endorsements and Laura, in this case, will never know that we've removed her. So with endorsements, endorsements matter because they improve your search engine optimization ranking or your rankings in LinkedIn, but having somebody like your mom endorse you doesn't exactly convey credibility. Okay. I, of course, do want to leave any recommendation from Ford Sakes to Laura Stack. Yes, and I put it back. It's just I didn't want to scroll and... <laughs> Okay, a marketing genius and, uh, and a very popular presenter and a recent <laughs> past president of the National Speakers Association. We don't yeah. want to knock them off. No, yeah. we're not removing them. We just picked them because they were at the top and, and we knew we'd be putting yeah. them right back. Good, good. Now, as you're going through, and, and certainly I don't know if you want to go to uh, another one, but while you're picking the next one, uh, and Paul, is there a, uh, I, I can see we have questions coming in, and I'll let you, Paul, uh, select what are the best questions to introduce to Mel. All right, and do we need another URL for LinkedIn profiles too? Uh, sure, send that over first so I have, can give it time to load while we answer the questions. Certainly. All right, so the questions we have so far, and just real quick, if you can, in maybe five words or a sentence or less, just recap the difference between timeless and timely, so I want a clarification. Sure. So timeless meaning means it's evergreen. The content that you're creating is relevant today and tomorrow. Or you can repurpose it. You can take content, you can take blog posts in specific that you created maybe three years ago. You can bring them out and you can update it with current news stories. Because that's what you do with some of my older articles. Because we have actually thousands of articles written on the website from years and years of, of adding content. So for example, if you were writing about uh, Mrs. Trump's speech from last night, that <laughs> would be timely. That would be timely, exactly. Yes. Now if we took one of your articles about, and now I have not seen the presentation, so let's talk about her opening you have a lot of articles about opening and you were critiquing Mrs. Trump's opening of her presentation. We could take that core article about how to open your presentation effectively and filter in examples from Mrs. Trump's presentation. And she did an incredible job. I don't care what you think of the convention or who you're going to vote for. And that was a surprise. And if I were going to make comments, I would say, one, you, she looked good. And because most people probably did not have high expectations because we haven't seen her speak, you exceeded all expectations. And of course, it was a scripted speech. However, you could tell she had practice. She'd taken this seriously. And some of the comments, and I'd agree, I would have liked some personal stories, perhaps some funny stories about the side uh, of Mr. Trump that we don't see. But she did a good job. So there would be a lot to comment on tying into all the Frit principles that we've been writing for for 20 plus years. Good. Uh, another quick question uh, while Mel is getting up the the LinkedIn page. 
Yes, I think um, Tracy asks, is there a way within LinkedIn to draft a new profile without the audience seeing it and while keeping your current profile visible? That is a great question, Tracy, and I actually do not recommend that. When you are in edit profile mode, actually let me bring that up and I will show you where it is. Because after your last webinar for the Frit VT community a couple of weeks ago, we went into mine and we made edits because whether it's your website, your LinkedIn profile, your speech, your sales presentation, we always have to revisit, refocus, rescript, revise, because we change and so does your expertise. Exactly. So real quick, when you click on profile or you go into edit profile mode, which is what we are at now, you'll notice there's pencils everywhere and that means you have the ability to edit any of these particular areas. Down here, you'll notice notify your network. You do want to have on, yes, publish an update to my network about profile changes. I know this sounds counterintuitive to what you're thinking. You're most likely concerned that you're inundating people with irrelevant updates. Mm -hmm. However, I invite you to consider that the average, there used to be a time when it was three to five touch points before a prospect became a client. Now, depending on what study you're reading, that three to five has increased from seven to 15 times. So if one of those touch points is something as simple as you've updated your summary or you've updated your headline, let social media work for you. You don't have to work it as hard. Also, if you are going through and making many changes to your profile all at one time, LinkedIn is going to take all of those updates and aggregate them into one notification. So you don't have to worry about inundating your audience with too many updates. People like to see that you're learning and that you're growing. So you do want to update them about your whatever changes are going on in your career. All right. And uh, we had Joe took away his <laughs> request for a review after seeing Dan Diamonds. So, oh, okay. And, okay. Have it, we have okay good so here's Joe so we are gonna go through Joe well I see it on my screen okay well I thought you just said he he, he, he just uh, came back and said yeah. he'll take the feedback so okay I thought okay, it was we'll a gentle. <laughs> I thought it was a different Joe <laughs> okay we'll be gentle <laughs> great job with the photo add the banner image like you saw on Patricia's up at the top here, she has an image up here. This is called your, well, LinkedIn calls it your background, but it's basically a banner image. That way people can get to know you a little bit better. And that was very much what we liked about Dan. So we are yeah. both, we are both proving we speak to big audiences as well as small. Exactly. So your headline, that's great that you are you are a professor at the University of Texas, uh, but it also says it right here, so you don't need to have it in your headline. What do you teach at the University of Texas that makes you different from other professors in the industry, not just at the university? I'd also invite you to update your LinkedIn URL to get rid of these numbers make it very easy for people to just have linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash Joe. I don't want to mispronounce your last name, so we'll pretend I'm saying that correctly. And, and some people are going to wonder, oh, I want to do that, Melanie, how do I do it? Right next to the, uh, the link here, when you are in edit profile mode, is going to be a widget. And I'll show you here on Patricia's. You will click on that. You'll be taken to a new screen, and up in the top right is where you can choose your public profile URL. 
You can have any URL that you want, assuming it is not already taken. When you own your own business, feel free to be a little more creative. Otherwise, you want to be as close to your actual name as possible. All right. As we scroll down, uh, I would encourage you to have summary above experience because remember that's the top, that's the third area where people look for. So add a summary. Be personal. Tell us about you. What are your career goals? What are your career objectives? And then in each of your experiences, personalize it. How do you don't want your actual job description? you want your interpretation of what you do and what you are responsible for. Great job with the, uh, the skills. I would encourage you to add more and the reason why I'm encouraging you to add more is you know what you do so well that you know the industry buzzwords. Who is looking to hire you that does not know what you know? You want to have a blend of both of those keywords. How would they describe you? And I would encourage you to add in a few other previous experiences, at least one. I know you've been uh, at the University of Texas for 14 years, but were there different positions while you were there? When you have this short of a profile without reading the dates, it can initially look like you're just starting in your career or that you're trying to hide something. So try to expand it out just a little bit. And yeah, great job. There you see, Joe, that was not too <laughs> painful. I believe, uh, uh, Paul, how many more people have we got want to be reviewed? We could spend the rest of our time on... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not with all the people who want theirs to be reviewed. I've just been going in order of the people who sent in their LinkedIn link. Okay. How about we talk about status updates versus yes. posts? That way yes. we can cover We want to make sure we actually cover the content that we promise. Right. And actually, while we're talking about status updates and posts, um, I'll bring in a question because we have a few questions left. One question is, can I use my blog post on my profile and make it into a Pulse post? So if you want to tie that in somewhere, just be my guest. That is actually a fabulous question, and I think they got a sneak peek at our agenda, because that uh, is the yeah. next topic we're going to talk about. So let me share the screen real quick. And for those of you who were saying, well, Mrs. Trump plagiarized the speech from, from our last presidential first lady, who is probably a more natural speaker than who might be our new first lady, uh, I would always, I always look at speakers for positive. She's not paying me to give her critique. I think it was a great surprise how well she did. And although we would like more stories, uh, can you imagine the pressure of some presentations? And uh, I don't think she sat down at her desk and wrote her speech herself. Okay, <laughs> let's back to the expert. So I do have to admit I am completely intrigued by her presentation and when we're done I will be going and watching it. <laughs> okay. Okay, so when you are logged into LinkedIn and you click on home, this is your home screen. This is your news feed just like in Facebook. This allows you to get a snapshot of what is going on on LinkedIn since you were last here. Now a quick tip here are these three dots. This allows you to sort your news feed by top updates or recent updates. By default, LinkedIn insists that you want to know about recent or top updates. Me personally, I want to know about recent updates. So that's how you can sort that and find the information that you're looking for. Okay. Now from there we also have an update and a mm. post. Yeah. A post is LinkedIn's pulse post, which is what was just asked. It's yeah. LinkedIn's blog. 
Ah. My recommendation is that whatever you publish to po to LinkedIn's Pulse, which, by the way, they seem to be phasing out that name and just replacing it with LinkedIn Post, uh, this should be timeless because it stays attached to your profile forever. Now, yes, you can delete it so you can leverage the timely aspect, but... Generally speaking, it builds credibility when you can create content that is timely and is attached to your blog, or attached to your profile, sorry. I am getting back to the blog element. Mm. Then you have an update. I'm going to explain this, and then I'm going to tell you don't do it, and then I'm going to come back and tell you to do it. Okay. So or, hear me out before... Okay. <laughs> An update is what you are currently doing or currently working on. Just like what you would post to Facebook. You're working on, you know, you're doing this, you're doing that. However, as an update, you do not want to share that you just went and got coffee. You do not want to share that, oh, super happy inspirational meme that doesn't mean anything related to business. LinkedIn is about business. Yes, memes get a lot of likes. Yes, they can get some comments. But generally speaking, they do not convert to business. And when you share too many of these what I call frivolous posts or, or frivolous updates, it actually looks like you have too much time on your hands and you're not a successful business person. Make your updates relevant to your professional career. You'll notice that Patricia and I both, right before the webinar started, had a similar post. We're just about to get started with the webinar. You can still sign up. Okay. It's related to what we do professionally. It's a moment in time. This is not relevant for the posts because it is timely. Mm. Okay? So now we'll go back and for publishing the post, you're exactly right. Your blog is where all of your original content should be. So as you write a blog post, post it to your blog first. Mm. Then set a reminder in your calendar to three to six months, revisit that article, update it based on current events, and then share it to LinkedIn. The reason you don't want to share them to LinkedIn at the exact same time is because LinkedIn is a bigger site than yours. It gets more credibility in the eyes of the search engines. So if you're posting the same content to both, you're giving LinkedIn more credibility than your site for original content, and your site, your rankings are going to fall. So you always want original content on your site and then repurposed content that is timeless on LinkedIn. Also, from an overall strategy perspective, most likely people are finding out about you on LinkedIn. So they've gone to your profile, they've read through some of your articles, and now they've clicked over to your website. When they click over to your website, they're looking for different content. They're looking for more information about you. If everything's the same, you've let them down. And with marketing touch points as high as 7 to 15, you've potentially lost them at 5. Mm. So let them look and find new content on your website that's different from what is on LinkedIn. It also gives you more content to share, more content to be out there, and to engage with people. All right, good. Good. So next, should we go into commenting on posts? Okay, perfect. So we'll click on recent, and you'll notice that I can't click on anything Kardashian just out of sheer principle, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is our webinar. You do what you want. <laughs> on principle, I just can't do it. <laughs> Good. Well, I would agree with you there. <laughs> so I clicked on one of the posts that was at the top. 
as you can see, they already have over a thousand likes, over a hundred comments, and over two hundred shares. Wow. I love the opening line. If this were a speech, they would get a thumbs up. <laughs> I completely agree. It entices the viewer. So when you're publishing to Pulse, you do want to have an image, whether it be the big image up at the top or you want to have an image right at the start. You always want to have an image. People are drawn in by the image first, title second, and then, like Patricia said, the opening line. The opening line tells them if they should read any further. You'll also see that they have links throughout. This is also good because it shows that you're referencing others, you're crediting others based on whatever you're writing. Mm. I have not read this article. He also has great calls within his article. So what's the result? Get to the point. People skim. They're, they're not going to read full amounts of text. In my opinion, this quote is too long. We would want to shorten it and get to the point. Your posts on LinkedIn should be between generally 300 to 600 words. You can do 800, anything lo longer than that, which this clearly is, usually does not get as many likes and views. Uh, so just something to keep in mind there. He also does an interesting idea of sharing other articles. You're welcome to do this. You do want to have keywords, and LinkedIn will remind you to attach these to each individual post. Remember on LinkedIn, you don't want to create new keywords. You want to use what they suggest and what is in their library of keywords. Now let's say, for sake of conversation, we read this article. Don't worry, I'm not actually going to comment well, on this. Why don't you say great <laughs> opening line? <laughs> well, I don't. We didn't read the article, so I don't know if that would be relevant. Okay. It was a great <laughs> opening line, whatever. Yeah, Paul, and there are a lot of great features. Just I'm not necessarily sure that co actually commenting. If we knew Justin, I would. Okay. But I don't know Justin, so it might seem out of context, and it would be more work to explain than it would be worth it. Okay. So generally speaking, when you're commenting on a LinkedIn post or you are commenting on an existing group discussion, you want to compliment mm -hmm. the author yes. in some way. Then you want to either disagree yes. respectfully or ask a question. Mm. Everything you do on social media is intended to either start a new conversation or to continue an existing conversation. Generally speaking, liking is lazy comments build relationships. Mm. You will get more results faster, meaning you will get more people interested in you, you will get more phone calls, you will generate more business by commenting on other people's content than you will by only creating your own. What this does, this formula, is you are acknowledging the original poster and their efforts. Yes. And then you are continuing a conversation that they started. By asking the question, you're showing you're interested and that you want to engage with them. Mm -hmm. So that is what your strategy is for every time you engage on a post or in a discussion acknowledge and then ask a question. Now when you're disagreeing you can say something we'll use one of Patricia's articles she one of her articles she talks about different strategies for opening. 
your presentation and she references she makes a section of has a, a tip about using quotes now in her quotes she explains how you can use quotes but you don't want to use overly common quotes now I completely agree with this because I actually personally get bored when people use quotes almost any throughout any part of their presentation popular ones that is but the unusual quotes pique my interest so but I've heard the exact opposite where some people prefer the overly used quotes and they think it adds credibility so let's take that position for a moment they could comment those are great tips Patricia I really like the third tip about how to manage Q&A but I disagree with opening using a common quote I have found that it builds it builds commonality that the audience is willing to listen to me mm. Patricia could then come back and respond something to the effect of that's great that you have had that experience in my time working with many clients I have found that they get better results when they use original quotes as opposed to the quotes that many people have heard time and time again so you see how we get a dialogue going yeah. I talk a little you talk a little I talk a little again that's the goal that tells people that you want to engage and build relationships Good. all right All right, now we have quite a few questions. One from one of our good Frit VT users in Ireland. Aidan Ooh. wants to know, and this is a question on the Frit VT user we had for business people: Is premium worth investing in? Fabulous question. I say, I personally have premium. Patricia has premium. I recommend it only if you are going to commit to an actual LinkedIn strategy. If you are going to be intentional about how you use LinkedIn and be on it on a regular basis, responding to people, outreaching to people, then yes, LinkedIn is worth every penny and it will pay for itself in no time. If you are not going to make that commitment, then no, don't, don't upgrade. All right. And Paul, I'll let you go and take the the most specific questions. I know Beth had a couple, but I'll throw it back to you in order that you received them. All right. And we'll go with, let's see here. These two can be used together. Joanne asks, oh, I'm sorry, what should be the delay between blogging on my own site and the LinkedIn site? That's from Chalky. And then Dorothy says... You, you answered that really. You said it should be... Well, that's, that was the second part. Yeah. Dorothy said, I understand posting to the blog first and LinkedIn later, yeah. but why the three-month wait seems like a long yeah. time, so those two go together. Okay. It does seem like a long wait. However, peop you want it to always appear fresh. Mm. Even if you're repurposing your content, because generally speaking, your core message is going to stay the same. Whether you talk, when you, Whether you watch a presentation that Patricia does today, 10 years ago or 10 years in the future, oh, I'm hitting my mic, yes. she's always, <laughs> she's always going to talk about specificity builds credibility. And having said that, if we were to take her exact blog post that she released yesterday mm -hmm. and push it out across all the platforms at the exact same time, it's actually going to dilute the value. Mm -hmm. One of the aspects of search engine optimization is how long does your does each of your content remain relevant so if you can spread that out from one day to one week or one day to one month that means your site is gonna have more timeless credibility and be more reliable for the search engines alright good alright Paul we have Joanne, do I need to start a business page in addition to my regular page? And, I, and follow up question was, 
is she sole proprietor? She said she's a sole practitioner, a sports psychologist, and she has no employees. Okay. Uh, it depends on your particular strategy. Is your business set up that it is your name, or do you have a company name? I particularly have a company name, so I do have a company page. Is your plan to hire employees? If it is, you do want to have a company page. If it's only ever going to be you, then maybe you can get away with not having a company page, but it honestly won't hurt you. It'll help you with your overall search engine credibility if you have one. All right. Paul? Beth, where are the best places to get your images? Ah, fabulous question. You do They're not... all fabulous questions. Yes, they are. <laughs> this is one of those hidden ones that many people don't think of. You have to be very careful when selecting your images for your posts, particularly on LinkedIn. Give credit where credit is due, and you do not want to use copyrighted images. There are many free photo sites out there. Uh, I don't have them off the top of my head, but I can share a link that gives you those. Also, if you use both Google and Bing, have an aspect of their search engine that allows you to search uh, royalty-free imagery. You can search for that. And if you have a subscription to one of the photo sites, that's even better yet. Yeah, we use we use iStock Photos. And just as an aside, certainly when you speak for companies, some companies have required, I prove that I paid for every image used in my PowerPoint. Now, yeah. you can create your own photographs. And we do, a lot of, yeah, we do a lot of that for your posts on LinkedIn. Anytime you see the Patricia Fripp Pink with one of her Frippicisms, that's imagery that we've created for her. So we don't have to worry about that right those rights because we already own them. Okay. Paul? All right. If I add a company page, how can I carry over my connections from my personal page? Great question. You're not carrying them over. Company pages and personal profiles are separate but connected. Generally speaking, personal profiles are active and company pages are passive. You want the activity on your personal profile, and people will follow your company page. If you're putting together a LinkedIn strategy, I would recommend you focus on your personal interaction over your company page. All right. Paul? All right. Um, I noticed a section which gives you information on who viewed your posts. When you see the name of the corporation, how can you use this information? Ah, that is a fabulous question. You can see who has viewed your posts. You can also see who's viewed your profile. And if you have premium, you can see more details about who and how many people have done this. You can use this as a way of learning more about them. You can use this as a way to reach out to them. There was just somebody who had shared the information about this webinar that I'm not connected to and that Patricia is not connected to. So I reached out to them and I thanked them for sharing the information and asked to connect with them so I could learn more about them. Yeah. We also have to invite people to join your Frit VT group, Patricia. Oh, yes. So <laughs> Melanie, and how do they join my Frit VT group? So, of course, we have my community which are actively involved and subscribed to my FRIP virtual training, which is the best way to be a great speaker, a sales presenter, easily, conveniently, quickly, and cost effectively. However, even if you are not a paid up member, you are invited to our FRIP VT LinkedIn group. And yeah. This is a way that you can certainly ask me questions. We, I always love reviewing opening lines, for example. And after the NSA convention, uh, Melanie will will ask in the Frit VT users group if uh, what were their highlights for the National Speakers Association. And I noticed that a lot of people are great at giving great content from their expertise that ties into speaking. But we actually like conversations. What did you like? What's your question? 
that we can have conversations about. So in the top search bar of LinkedIn, you'll type in Fripp VT and you'll notice that there is a group and a company. You're welcome to follow the company, encouraged to, but what we're specifically looking for is the group. You would select that and you will be taken to this page where you can ask to join, we'll approve, and then after every webinar that Patricia does, we start a conversation similar to uh, what we did last week when yes. we did the social media strategy and you're welcome to post your questions in here and both Patricia and I will get back to you. We've done this with I believe everyone that you've interviewed. So this yes. is your way to get a sneak peek as to the insights of what you'll learn when you sign up for Frit VT. And Gary McKenzie had, uh, he, he was lucky enough to be one of the, the people you reviewed his website and he was excited that he had done so much right, however he wrote all the, and being very analytical, he was really good at giving specific information that he has adapted and he learned from you and that means even if you weren't on the call, you got the benefit of that review. And exactly. any questions that we do not get to will be answered on the Fripp VT uh, LinkedIn group. Yes. And you can ask more. So you're, you're, you're doing very well. We have to be very respectful of the time commitment you make. And if you came in late, please, you can listen to it again in about three hours. You'll get the replay link. So, Paul, are there any short burning questions that you need to have? I think the quickest one would be, how do you put links into posting? Um, I think I understand the question. Uh, generally speaking, you'll copy the link and you'll paste it into the, not the conversation title, but you want it in the details section. And once you see the box that appears showing the image and then the title, you want to actually delete the written out link because it becomes redundant and it also looks more professional when you delete that link out. Just wait until you actually see that box pop up though. All right, and, and Paul, I see Dan has written a question here, repeat, which means uh, is he repeating, wants Melanie to repeat or he's already sent the question in once and he wants the answer? It's a question that he put, he posed earlier. It's, um, I already have a large following of people that are not my key market. I've been using tagging to segment them. Please discuss that versus weeding my LinkedIn from thousands down to only those in my market. Also, please discuss the use of Sales Navigator. I just didn't think we'd have time to cover all of that. All right. Well, the snapshot <laughs> just for Dan being persistent. Dan will have another conversation after. You know how to get a hold of me. Uh, snapshot version, segmentation of your contacts, that's what we talked about earlier with the tagging, fabulous. I would also add in there, it is okay to remove connections from people. Don't feel that you are obligated to stay connected to somebody. We all accidentally hit that connect button when we don't want to, it's okay to remove that connection. If somebody takes that personally, they've got too much time on their hands. All right, good. And uh, let's see. So Tracy just joined the Fripp VT user group. Great. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> uh, are there any questions unlike anything that we've posed to Melanie, Paul? Um, there are quite there are a few that we still have left, but I, if you want me to go with one more, I think the a quick one would be when you make a reference in your post to say a corporation or someone from that corporation, is it all right to add the logo, the company logo, to your page? To the company page, yes. To your personal profile, no. Your personal profile is about you, not the company. The company does not own this profile. I want to see your shining, smiling face and a close-up of it. And the way you know that your profile photo is good enough is I should be able to look at your LinkedIn profile, having never met you, Walked in, walk into the local coffee shop, walk right up to you, put my hand out, and say, hi, my name's Melanie. If I can't do that, it's not a good enough photo. 
All right, perfect. And just one burning question from me. When people request, because I know a lot of my friends ask this, when people request, I want to link to you, what do you suggest we do? Because we shouldn't accept everyone. Correct. If we don't recognize their name. Let me do a quick squeak. Squeak. Let's try that again. A quick screen share. Okay. If you scroll over the top little man icon, you'll notice that you have all these pending invitations or connection requests. And this is me? This is you. Oh, and that's from... That is from uh, yesterday, because I went last night. Now, Yarrow, I just met him at Genentech yesterday at my coaching, and I want to connect to him. Well, he's a movie star handsome, but he actually, (laughs) within my audience, and I will be working with him in a couple of weeks. So definitely. Okay, so real quick. We have the option to ignore anybody or to accept anybody right from here. But now let's say you're not exactly sure of who the people are. The initially you don't see the request or see you, it doesn't click in your mind who the person is. If you single left click on the little man icon, you'll be taken to this screen. If they customized their LinkedIn connection request to you, this arrow will be a blue chat box, a little chat bubble, and that's how you'll know that they sent you a message. When you scroll over it, their message will pop up and you'll be able to see it. Nobody here personalized their message. I know that you hear all the time that you should. I go back and forth. Uh, Yes, it's nice to help convey, you know, help explain why you're sending the connection request. But realistically, like you see, LinkedIn is about efficiency. They're not encouraging you to actually read messages that are sent to you for connection requests. They're encouraging you to connect or ignore. So, you know, we can then go through and let's say we don't know Maria. Mm. So what we're going to do is we hit that back arrow that you saw And we're going to send her a quick little message that says, Hi, Maria. Thank you for reaching out. I am happy to connect with you. May I ask how you heard about me Mm -hmm. and why you are interested in connecting? And actually, I understand you're giving an example, but Maria is actually on the webinar today. Yay! She, I'm not actually sending this to her. I'm typing it out so you can see it, because I know in the replay you'll hit pause, and you'll ask what the message is. So thank you in advance for your help. This message accomplishes two goals. First, it starts the conversation. Remember, we want to start or continue an existing conversation. And two, it weeds out what I call connection collectors. Those are the people on LinkedIn who don't care who they're connected to. They only care that they have more connections than you and everyone else on this webinar. (laughs) Because connection collectors, 99% of the time, will not respond to you. And if they do, they openly admit they're a connection collector. So this message will help you identify connection collectors versus people who actually value being connected with you and want to learn about you. I generally give people a week to respond. If they don't respond, I click ignore and no hard feelings. Since we know that Maria is on the webinar, we will go and we will accept her uh, connection request. And anybody else on this call, it might be good if we do not have a personal relationship. When you connect to Melanie, when you connect to me, just say great webinar, great information. 
with that. We want to be respectful for your time. Thank you for your active participation. Uh, as you heard, this is a one of our best sign-ups. And we thank you, Melanie, for being very generous with your information. We thank you, Paul. And Paul, just put up Melanie's website if anyone would like to sign up for her newsletter, which is called the... Instigator. That's right. <laughs> the Instigator. Very good. And certainly, if you have not subscribed to FrippVT.com, sign up and take a free trial. You'll get a free chapter on opening stories and sales. If you have any specific questions or want a demo, uh, Paul will give you his just Paul at Fripp.com and he will start the conversation. Thank you for your active participation, enjoying the replay, and certainly feel free if it has value to you to share the link with any of your friends. Uh, if you have signed up for any one of our webinars, you will be invited to others. If you no longer want to hear about us I, or from us, I can't imagine it, but you just unsubscribe. With that, thank you, Melanie. Thank you, Paul. Thank you thank very you much. Bye.